a country crowned the third largest economy and a sworn to peace since the Second World War has finally decided to develop a billion dollar aircraft carrier. In this video, Military Knowledge has come up with the latest juice on how the Japanese billion dollar aircraft carrier is ready for action. So welcome back military lovers, we at Military Knowledge have chosen a topic to spill the beans on today. Before getting our minds drenched with all that heavy info, we'd like you to salute that subscribe button because why not? Curtsy that like button and ring that bell so you stay abreast of all the latest military info. With that out of the way, let's start paddling the Japanese waters, shall we? Peace. If there's one word Japan has decided to make its synonym, it's this. But the country was only sometimes a dove. So what made it become one? It surrendered during the Second World War. Okay, so what made that happen? Well, there are two theories. We'll start with the one most people go by, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. Well, it makes sense that most people buy this theory, as the surrender took place less than a week after the bombings. The other speaks of the Japanese military's involvement with the Soviet Union. While neither of these things exclusively contribute to Japan's surrender, different parties side with different theories. Long story short, after its surrender, General Douglas MacArthur painted the entire country in white by prohibiting its use of weaponry, even if it was for self-defense. If we were to quote the final draft of their constitution, the Japanese people forever renounce war as a sovereign right of the nation. It further says, land, sea and air forces, as well as another war potential, will never be maintained. But all this whitewashing done by the Americans did not survive time. Japan could not stay an infant under the care of the elite nations, at least not until the Korean War of 1950, when US troops were deployed there, leaving the country exposed to threats. This was when the government formed its National Police Reserve, comprising around 75,000 people. This tree later strengthened its branches and became the National Safety Force. But again, this network was not developed enough to fight a war. The country had an army only after they upgraded the self-defense forces. Cut to the present, and the country has implemented a bit of self-defense. In 2015, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe nodded in approval to amend the country's constitution enriched with pacifism. The government has sworn never to initiate a fight. One reason Japan can be seen upscaling its defense line could be China. You see, Japan and China are kind of frenemies regarding the military game. This dates back to the 1930s when Japan seriously harmed Chinese citizens. However, prevention is better than cure, isn't it? While clearly violating its former laws, it can be argued that an aircraft carrier sure falls under the category of defensive weapons. While we're on that topic, which weapons, in your opinion, fall under the defensive category and which ones fall under the offensive category? If you ask us, all guns are nasty. What makes them defensive is the situation in which they're used. In this case, Japan has sworn to self-defense, not violence. We hope for all of our sakes that it remains so. The defense buddy has been in the works for a very long time now, starting from 2009. In 2011, one H-1 Marine United was awarded the contract to build it. The first ship, Izumo, foundly named after one of the parted of the 1905 Battle of Tsushima, was launched in January of 2012. It was finally opened for public viewing a year later, on August 6th of 2013. Have you heard about that date before? It's the date of the Hiroshima nuclear bombing. While it sure looks like it's planned, authorities say that this timing is a bittersweet coincidence. With a capacity to house around 14 helicopters, its use is limited to search and rescue operations and patrolling the Japanese waters. Well, great for starters, right? If we were to talk of capacity, it's said to be 470 crew members and the same number of troops. Other characteristics include a dead weight of 19,500 tons and a length of 248 meters, with a maximum speed limit being 30 knots. The engine's combined gas turbine unit consists of four General Electric LM turbines. Before we go into the next ship of the series, we'd like to take a little self-promotion break. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you for keeping your eyes glued to your screen for this long. We really appreciate your attention span. 
Take a moment though to move those eyeballs. You'll find the subscribe button right down below. Hammer it and show some love. And whilst you're at it, consider liking the video and pushing that bell icon to never miss out on military content. In August 2015, they decided to put forward the next ship, Karga. This is the largest, enabling it to carry around 85 aircraft. While its size may pose troubles in times of war, this would be more than enough. In 2018, Japan proposed its naval development program, which aimed at converting one of its helicopter carriers into an aircraft carrier and thereby upgrading its military game. This entire upgrade was based on Lockheed Martin F-35B deck-based fighters. This upgrade was completed in 2021. The whole project cost a whopping $28 million. Later in the same year, ever since the end of the Second World War, the country paraded its military prowess. On October 3rd of 2021, an F-35B Lightning II fifth-generation fighter landed on Japan's first ever aircraft carrier. If you think that this needs to be grander, then we've got news for you. If all goes well, the next stage of upgradation will be followed in 2025. This isn't just limited to the Izumo series, but will also involve its sister, Kaga. Japan plans to load Kaga's carriers with 16 F-35B carriers each during this upgrade. Japan seems optimistic about the whole situation. We say this as Japan's self-defense forces approach the US to acquire 42 Block 4 helicopters. New Tabaru Air Base has been chosen to house these helicopters. Six F-35B fighter jets are set to reach Japanese waters in 2024, and two more of them are expected to arrive by 2025. F-35B fighter jets cease to fall into the premium range, the Japanese self-defense forces have their hands tied due to the space constraints on their carriers. The Kaga and Izumo, being relatively smaller in size, can only accommodate aircraft with short takeoffs and vertical landings. Things are going well so far, though. The naval exercises held in the Pacific Ocean were attended by Japan's first ever aircraft carrier, the Izumo. Turns out that their efforts were successful after all. While that's a matter of celebration for the self-defense forces of Japan, their rivals China and South Korea wouldn't be too happy. Don't get us wrong, when comparing the aircraft carriers of these regions, Japan still needs to catch up. China, for instance, has three aircraft carriers, which are way larger than that of Japan's. Considering Japan's humble beginnings, it's a small leap in the right direction. Although not an adult in its development and defense, Japan surely has blossomed into an adolescent. We say so because its defense protocol relies on America and Britain to protect its borders. They surely are in great hands with America, owing to the latter's collection of 10 aircraft carriers. If things were to turn dirty between Japan and its rivals, China and South Korea, they could do more than stay afloat. Although a military channel at heart, military knowledge is humanitarian nonetheless. We sincerely hope that all remains well between the nations and that military exercises be the only occasion they parade these aircraft carriers. That would indeed be a spectacle for military lovers like us. As we draw the curtains on today's topic though, we're curious to know about your stance on the militarization of countries today. What would be enough and what would be too much? Do let us hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, what would you like to hear from us next? You already know that we take your suggestions seriously. Also, if you've loved our content so far and have yet to subscribe, then what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, give us a big fat thumbs up, and do we even need to mention the bell icon now? Until you see us again, which won't be too long, it's a bye from your military buddies.